Ever wondered how digital fashion comes to life? We're breaking down the process step by step, from pattern creation to rendering an Unreal Engine. Let's get started. To start, we dive into our references. Using a sewing pattern helps a lot. I'll speed things up by using one of Clo's free pants templates. They offer a variety of basic shapes you can refine later. Next, in Marvelous Designer, we choose an avatar. Now we can find meta-human body shapes directly within Marvelous to get a perfect base. With our avatar ready, it's time to bring in the cloth patterns from Connect. As you can see, they don't fit perfectly just yet. We'll fix it with auto-fitting tool. Meta-human avatars have their fitting suit, but if you use a different avatar, you can quickly create one here. This feature adjusts the pants to the avatar's body shape with minimal manual tweaking. Look, it's a lifesaver. Once things are in place, it's time to fine tune the pattern. We adjust shapes, lengths, and seams to get the exact fit and drape we want. I'm aiming for wider look here. Details make the difference. Adding buttons and small elements gives the pants a finished, realistic look. Now for UV mapping, which is pretty simple with clothes since we already have a 2D layout. I place the pattern in multiple UDIMs to get the highest resolution possible. I scale everything evenly to keep the proportions consistent. This way, we will get correct scale of fabric's pattern. Next, we're ready to jump into Substance Painter. I export the mesh checking Thin and Weld. In Substance Painter, we start with baking. We will need these baked maps for our masks. I'll break down the textures I made. So starting with a pre-made material is fine, but to achieve a realistic look, let's spice it up with a bit more layers. What I do is I create fill layers with some color, add a black mask, and then modify it with generators, filters, and hand painting. In real life, the color of denim is washed out multiple times to achieve lighter tones. And that's also the way I work here. First, I create some vertical fibers by adding clouds and fractal mask, then mask named Grunge Roughcast, and multiply it with Mask Editor, which uses the maps we baked previously. Then I add dark blue color and mask it with Ambient Occlusion and generator named UV Border Distance to darken the areas of stitching. I make similar layer to darken places that weren't washed out and add some depth. Now layer for washed edges and a one for the front of the pants, where I hand paint the mask, add blur, and set it to saturation. When my fabric is almost ready, I tweak some values and colors. To add volume, I use Dynamic Wrinkles tool from Sele Direction. It creates folds along the path. This can be done in ZBrush, but it's also nice and easy in Substance Painter. Now for the fun part, stitching. I add stitches along seams and pockets, using the Top Stitching Path tool to place curves directly on the model. You can customize the type, color, and width of each stitch. Now to make these pants move, I pick a catwalk animation from Mixamo and retarget it to my avatar. I import the animated avatar to Blender and add a neutral pose at the start to smooth out transition of our pants. Then I export it with the armature to FBX file and add it to Marvelous. Now for a bit of magic, setting fabric properties. We adjust weight, thickness, and stretch. I will use Denim Raw preset. Then we can just click Record. Now we can take a moment to admire our beautiful simulation and then export it as Alembic. I want to render the jeans in Unreal Engine, so I import them into my LookDev project, making sure to change Import Type to Geometry Cache. I drag the Alembic file into my level and import textures from Substance. Make sure to open the ORM texture and uncheck sRGB. Now we'll create the shader. I drag the textures into my material and connect the nodes. The ORM texture stores three types of information in its channels, so I'll connect occlusion, roughness, and then metallic separately. I change the shading model to cloth so that our material won't look plasticky. Then I set the parameter for fuzz color to 0.1 and cloth to 1 to actually enable the correct shading. But look, the textures are off. That's because we're using UDIMs. So we have to enable virtual texture support in the project settings. 
In the outliner, I parent the genes to my turntable. Then I drag them into my level sequence, click plus, and add the geometry cache, which is our simulation. I render the sequence using Movie Render Queue, where I choose Apple ProRes, my desired resolution and output. Then I click Render. From start to finish, that's the journey of these digital genes. See you next time for more 3D insights.